Hello, everybody. Welcome to our um, very first uh, LFX mentorship showcase. Um, so my name is Shua Khan. I am um, a kernel maintainer and Linux fellow at the Linux Foundation. In this role, I get to learn, continue to learn and share, and then also more importantly, enable others to uh, learn and share. So that's um, really awesome to be able to do that. When um, we start learning a new area or starting a new, wanting to learn a new project, we're all faced with a, uh, the same problems, all of us. Where do we start and what, uh, first of all, we have to figure out which project we are passionate about, right? Which project do we want to contribute to? Which of the open source projects appeal to us? And after that, we are trying to figure out, well, hey, how do I get started with it? And then next comes in that where do we, where can we find resources uh, to be able to start our learning and start contributions? So once we learn enough of the project, we're wondering who is there to help us? Can I reach out to one of the community members and ask a question? Um, do I have, can I ask intelligent questions even? That we're, not, we're unsure when we are starting out. So at the Linux Foundation, we have several resources for you to be able to go explore your learning paths on the Linux Foundation training site. And then you can not only explore your learning paths, you can also um, take free courses and explore training options. And then another um, avenue for you is listening to experts speak about the areas, several areas are in, ranging technologies, software engineering, open source, uh, kernel specific topics in LF Live webinars. So you can do that. And then once you have that idea and you go, okay, I want to take my learning uh, to the next level and work directly with uh, mentors, then you can apply, take advantage of the Linux Foundation mentorship program and apply to one of the projects to be able to work with um, your, the mentors directly. So now, say you applied, you graduated, you completed your program, what's next for you? Um, this is what we are doing in, in terms of connecting you, uh, connecting the graduates to with the, oh gosh, connect, connecting the graduates with the, um, our, uh, employers and employees looking for, employers looking for uh, new talent. Sorry about that. I don't know if you saw the something technical glitch looks like on my desktop. Okay, so this is the next step we have here in terms of connecting our new graduates with the uh, people looking for talent. So that's where we are. And uh, first of all, I want to acknowledge and uh, our mentors without them, uh, our program is not possible. So we have, um, next up will be, I'll be handing this off to our um, um, graduates to speak. And Peter, you can go ahead and start your presentation. I'll stop sharing now. Okay, so I will begin now. Uh, okay, so hello everyone. My name is Piotr Pawłowski. Mm, I'm from Poland. I'm 22 years old. Uh, I'm a third year computer science student in Kraków. Uh, how I got here? Well, my mentor was my uh, well, was teaching me at the uni. So he told us about the whole thing connected with mentorship and I sent my CV and now I'm here. So, so you can see me. Okay, I was working with Hyperledger iRoha. Hyperledger iRoha is an open source uh, blockchain made by Soramitsu and then made open source. 
Uh, it differs from other blockchains because it has no default support for smart contracts, for example, and it uses a set of predefined functions to modify the ledger. Uh, well, so my task was to modify the queries, so modify the client libraries to enable the new queries or modified queries rather, and to modify the internal database uh, querying. Uh, yes, and it was planned to add about five pull requests, modify docs, provide examples, and make whole thing available for other people. Uh, yeah, there were some technologies I have to learn in order to, to get things done. Iroha uses protobufs for communicating with clients and for internal communication. Uh, it is written in C++ main code and it uses Go for borrow integrations and borrow enables us to, to use uh, Ethereum virtual machine in, in Iroha so we can execute some smart, some smart, some smart contracts code. Uh, also, it uses Python, Java, and JavaScript to client libraries, and Docker is used for testing in some of them. But getting into this mentorship thing, it was not only getting these technologies mentioned before, but also getting into the whole Hyperledger ecosystem, where you know you can uh, know something new, something new about other blockchains, read white papers, read some use cases and make your knowledge wider and broader about business logic, not only coding. Yeah, it was also my first project uh, in open source and my first big project like no, not made to my university. Uh, so I was meant to, to attend to community meetings, participate in the community, uh, read docs and know what's in them and what's not mentioned. Uh, to use GitHub, not only to share code, but to test it and to make everything clear and visible for others so they know what I'm doing. Uh, it was, whole, whole thing is open source, you know, so you have to meet the code quality, cover everything in tests, uh, make everything clear and visible, as I said before, uh, and you have to let others to use it. So provide documentation, make examples, and make everything, enable everything to everyone. <laughs> okay, because it was a mentorship and I'm the mentee, so there have to be some mentee, mentor. Uh, he's not with us today, I think. Uh, his name was Grzegorz Bajor. He's a teaching assistant at AGH University in Krakow, Poland. Uh, yeah, and he, he let me know about the whole thing. Uh, working, him, working with him was, some kind of new and, and very interesting experience. Uh, we hold the weekly meetings. Uh, he helped me a lot with understanding the code. So yeah, he has some previous uh, experience with Iroha. He uses it for a few years. Uh, so he led me into internals of the code, how it's work internally, the, alg the algorithms it's, it is using. Uh, but he was also great, you know, with some, some tricks like dealing with community. So to communicate with everyone, uh, let everyone know what you are you doing, uh, ask the questions. Uh, you know, there are some tricks when you are working with other people and he showed me them and it was it was great experience. He was also the first person who was making the reviews of my code. So he read most of the error code. <laughs> uh, he was also reviewing ideas like we were working and I probably came up with many ideas, but not all of them were, were, were good enough to be taken into coding stage. Uh, so he, he was the person who said, yeah, you are wrong here, here and here. And you can, you can came up with something new, which is going to be better. And I think uh, that it's time to say, uh, thank you, Mr. Grzegorz. I'm, I'm very grateful for your job and you were uh, a great piece of help for me. Yeah, I, I think that I appreciate it very much. Uh, but it was not only him as a mentor, but it was also the whole community uh, who was working with me, I can say, and was supporting me actively. Uh, they hold uh, biweekly meetings in which they talk about the code, code, the development, and, uh, you know, in what direction Iroha is going to be developed. 
Uh, I, also, I also have some contacts with IROHA core team developers. Uh, so, you know, there are some things that even my mentor uh, know, didn't know, and I have to ask them. So, for example, about uh, messaging format, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, also, the community was a great help with exploring IROHA code because these are people who work with IROHA for quite a, a lot of time. So they knew about everything, probably. <laughs> and it was also very interesting to, you know, work with previous, previous community, previous mentorships, because people already made some internships into, into IROHA and they added many interesting features and it was great to read it, read the code they added and, and also know how other features work. Uh, there were some, you know, small disadvantages, I could say, uh, as language barrier, you know, you are, it's your first big project, you are calling into meeting and they are talking with some strange accents that you can't understand. Uh, but these are small things rather and yeah, I, I still make everything positive. So, so they are very small. <laughs> okay, and after I came up with all these things and the code was written and the whole thing was going to, to the end, I can look back and think about my achievements. So all pull requests that were planned were merged into main code and they were released in IROHA 1.3 uh, release. Uh, also before, uh, because I ended my uh, job uh, like two months before before November, I was able to add some extra extra work. So I decided to work with Barrow integration. So with, so with enabling executing Solidity code in Barrow and making it in IROHA. Uh, so I was also able to make extra pull requests uh, with Barrow integration. I presented my work to IROHA community so I can get some feedback. Uh, did my work was useful? Are they using it? And yeah, it was it was useful. They are using it. <laughs> that was very great to me that my work was not not empty. Mm. During the work, I also found bug in a client library that was not not meant to be, but it happened. Uh, I pr I modified the documentation so it's now clear how how things work and how you can use it. And also, I provided examples in all three libraries. Uh, providing examples were pretty interesting. I can, you know, you have to write everything in in some programming language, each different, and it was interesting. Uh, when I look into IROHA, yeah, IROHA is alive. It's a small community, but they are very, very lively. Uh, it's great, and there is still work to be done. I probably every month I got new idea about what can be added to IROHA. Uh, I'm looking forward to read more use cases because I think uh, having business logic is is important, uh, but also to get my knowledge wide and broad for other blockchains and for their usage usage, and also to explore deeper. You know, you have to always look deeper so understand more and more and more, and and it gives you wider perspective. Yeah, so I think the journey does just begin and there is still work to do. I'm thinking about writing maybe some academic work, my bachelor's degree connected with blockchain technologies, but you know, it's, it's the future. Uh, yeah, and maybe some business usage, like if I can get some job connected with, with blockchain or came up with my own idea and my own company, that would be great too. Uh, if you want to see my work, it's all provided on this presentation, but it's, you know, whole things are on the wiki page. Uh, you can check everything there, uh, but I also provided links to GitHub issues and commits I made. Yeah, and if you have any questions, you can always uh, contact me on this mail. I provided on the first slide or second, second. Uh, yeah. Maybe someone have some questions. I think we still have some time, like about a minute. Okay. 
Okay, so that's all. Thank you all for listening to me and see you, I hope. Okay, uh, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Phil Potter. Um, I'm gonna talk to you about my um, experience with the uh, mentorship program. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, I work for OMI. We're a um, smart charging electric vehicle platform in the UK. I'm a back-end developer for them. Uh, and we also sell our own chargers. Obviously, my um, my talk is in a personal capacity, but they, they're, they're very happy for me to be here. They're very supportive. Um, yeah, I've loved uh, computers since my childhood. Um, worked as a very long time for an IT technician. Did a computer science degree. Um, and I just really wanted to take my passion for Linux uh, a lot a lot further. Um, so um, I chose the Linux kernel bug fixing mentorship. Um, main reasons for this is I wanted to learn more about the kernel itself, um, how it's put together, how it's structured. Um, this basically involves finding automated bugs via the sysbot slash syscaller service, um, fixing them, um, and then uh, contributing those fixes back to the kernel project. Um, now this was uh, not 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 as easy as it sounded at first. Um, quite 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 scary. Hence the purpose for the mentorship. Um, so I mean, I'll talk a bit about the skills that I gained. Um, so one of, one of the, one of the first and most important ones I'd say is obviously um, the main purpose is, is learning more about the internals of the the Linux kernel. Um, I will, by the very nature of um, Sysbot and Syscaller, I was looking at. Um, patches for um, or, or bugs, sorry, for many different areas of the kernel. Um, so the networking subsystem, um, I think my first bug was actually an FB dev. Um, it, there was an EXT4 bug I found, a few SCSI bugs. Um, literally, there are hundreds of um, bugs on there. Uh, and a lot of them are quite low lying fruit, so to speak, as well, um, which was quite nice to, to get a sort of a feel for the for the process. Um, yeah, I, I learned things like symbol um, debugging, of, uh, sorry, symbol decoding of stack traces, kernel memory sanitizer, um, all stuff that that gave me a much better feel for how things actually work internally, and it just made me, a, generally speaking, a better a better C programmer. Right um, now, uh, another skill I gained was actually um, participation uh, within the process itself, within within the kernel community. Right, um, so. Sending your patches um, by email, um, you know, commenting on other patches, the, 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 the way it's done, Git send email, you know, all, all the various tools that have to be used to participate in this process, obviously not immediately apparent. Now, I've obviously sent a few patches before this, but, but going through this process really helped me with that um, in terms of uh, getting used to the tooling um, and, you know, understanding feedback, working with it, um, you know, changing things um, and, and, and generally becoming more proficient and more efficient and making fixes faster um, and, you know, making more of a difference, I guess, um, to the community. Um, so uh, another skill, believe it or not, obviously working on um, unstable kernels, shall we say, and then testing patches um, generally not best to do on a, on a production machine, right? So, so a lot of the time I would use virtual machines for this. Um, this just had a side effect of, of making me a more efficient user of, of, of desktop Linux, right? Um, I happened to be um, sort of using a laptop at, at the time as well um, to test a lot of patches. Um, but, you know, the, 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 the generally speaking, when you're getting stack traces and kernel whoopses and so on, um, the, the, the system as a whole will often die. Um, and so it's, it's useful to be able to debug it from a virtual machine perspective. Uh, also just backing up my work, you know, some email backups and stuff like that, it, it becomes really second nature. Um, so I really came a lot more proficient at that as well. Um, and yeah, it just, again, became second nature. So um, I'd like to um, talk about my experience and I'll start with, um, I'll start with my mentor, Greg Crow Hartman. Um, I can't say enough positive things about him. Um, you know, the guy is um, cr crazily busy. Um, you know, he's a stable maintainer, staging tree. Um, you know, uh, just before the talk, they opened up the uh, maintainers file in the mainline kernel. Um, Greg is listed 18 times in that file. Um, he's been super helpful to me. Um, you know, I... I I say in, in my bullet point there that he's answered all my questions um, and some of them have been pretty naive, um, you know, um, coming from a very novice um, 
position um greg's been super helpful never patronizing um never rude um really encouraging um you know and this is all the more impressive to me given how much work greg has to do i mean i mean i i spoke with him um and he told me one day that he'd had over a thousand emails to deal with. And I imagine that's an average day for him. So to do that and be patient with um, people like me is, is, is fantastic. Um, actually talking to Greg, getting to speak to him was, was amazing for me. Um, you know, he's like a rock star to me. Um, you know, I've been following him for, for years and, and, and the other kernel developers as well. And so it was a real honor for me. Um, surprises um from my experience so just how helpful people were right so um i obviously um uh, was very apprehensive when uh, when i first started contributing right um not so much for patches that i knew were, were obvious fixes but more for for systems that i wasn't so sure about um and some of my patches were totally the wrong approach right um and the compulsion there is to think that people were gonna you know um insult you or mark you down or whatever right and I, and I have to say um my experience in the kernel community has been so positive in that regard people are so helpful um you know i even recall um one chap um emailing me on my patch to say no this is the wrong approach this won't work and then 30 minutes later i think emailing me some suggestion code to, to actually do the to do the job properly like people have been so helpful um and encouraging and welcoming so i mean just don't believe what you read online about how um aggressive things are because any anything but true like everyone has been so supportive to me um another surprise um just the variety of things i actually ended up doing so i started with bug fixing and then uh, around halfway through that process the uh, university of minnesota controversy came up with um some uh, individuals attempting to deliberately introduce uh, vulnerable commits into the kernel tree. Um, now, obviously, there were several hundred of these, and they all got reverted. And I actually got to help check some of the patches over, and in some cases, um, even improve them significantly. And the feedback I got, particularly from Greg on that, was was fantastic. And there was a there was a statement from the um, Linux Foundation about that as well. And my, to have my name listed was a, <laughs> in that list of con kernel contributors was, was, was a big confidence boost to me. Uh, and then I ended up actually working on the um, Realtek R8 uh, 188EU wireless driver. Um, I've had a big part to play in that in terms of um, importing a newer kernel source into the, drop, uh, into the staging tree and uh, continuing to work on that as and when I'm able to um so it's all been really good fun the amount of stuff i've actually got to do and, and that's helped me to carry on with the process after the mentorship um the third surprise to me was just how much more i could get involved right so uh, a few few months ago um jen zaxbo on on um, the mailing list basically said uh that he wished to hand off the uniform cd-rom maintainership um as he had so much other stuff to be dealing with, like IOU Ring and, and then many other projects. Um, and I just put myself forward thinking, now, ah, you know, nothing will happen. Um, and crazily, um, I was accepted. Um, and that, that was just a huge confidence boost for me. Um, just just being part of the community in such a in such a visible way. I had a Pharonics article mentioned me and all sorts of things. And that was really, really exciting. Um, so future goals, um, I want to obviously make, make as many patches as possible. Um, you, you know, I really enjoy contributing, um, getting my commit count up, but not just for me, but because I want to have a positive benefit on everyone else. Uh, I want to learn even more about the kernel itself. Uh, there's still a lot of areas that I can do a lot better on. Um, and I found it really interesting digging into the, to the lower parts of the stack. Um, you know, working with people, having people um say to me good job and indeed me um contributing uh, commenting and acting and then you know signing off on other people's patches has been been really fun as well um and then you know finally i'd really like people to to get involved in the same way that i have you know the process has been so um helpful to me um so welcoming um and you know it's really taken the mystique off kernel development and getting into the community and so on um and and it's a fantastic idea that people should 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 throw themselves into um so thank you so much for watching and listening to me um i want to thank greg again i want to thank the linux foundation um Chua and, and everyone at linux foundation that's put this program together 
um, and indeed for continuing to sort of shepherd the, the top echelons of the Linux community to, to begin with. Um, if you want to talk to me, um, email me, LinkedIn, um, and that's on my website as well. Um, th thanks, thanks for listening. I'm re really glad that I was able to, to talk to you all. Um, thanks very much. So uh, hello, everyone. I'm Lucas. And today I'll be presenting about my mentorship project, the Common Smooth Expression Elimination for the Salon Compiler and other optimizations. So a quick introduction about me. I've just graduated in computer engineering, and I'm particularly interested in how the software interacts with the hardware. So before the mentorship, I did an internship with compiler theory at Google, and it, I really enjoyed doing it. It really caught my attention to work with compilers. So I decided to apply to the Linux mentorship to be closer to low-level programming and uh, how computers work under the hood. So my project was around the Solang compiler, which is a Solidity compiler written in Rust. It targets a few blockchains such as Solana, Substrat, and EWASP. And uh, it is a front end for the LLVM uh, infrastructure. Um, the LLVM, however, uh, does not exploit some traits of the Solidity language, and it allows us to make uh, several optimizations inside the Solang compiler. So my goal of this mentorship was to deep dive into, com uh, into compilers, especially how computers work under the hood. So my mentorship had three uh, milestones. Uh, the first one was to detect and remove unused variables. So here on the right hand side of the slide, uh, the variable V is undefined. Uh, the second one would be to raise warnings for undefined variables. Um, so variable P here is undefined as I declare it with no value in it. We might read it uh, having no valid variable. And the third one would be the common sub expression elimination. So expression A plus A times B is repeated throughout the code and I remove it from the intermediate, so like intermediate representation and exchange it by a temporary. So my mentor was Shen Yang. He's the creator and maintainer of the Solan compiler. We work together uh, doing design uh, discussions. So every optimization for compiler has many trade-offs. Um, and these discussions were very fruitful because uh, Shen is uh, has deep knowledge about compilers and uh, computers overall. And we also work together reviewing code. So Shen reviewed most of my code, but sometimes when he changed something that intersect uh, what I was working with, he asked for my, for my advice, for my, for my review. And I'm a very, I'm, I am very grateful for Shen's career recommendations. He gave me a very cool advice if I wanted to keep working with compilers uh, in the future. So uh, some valuable skills I gained from this mentorship is that I had responsibility from day one. So my contributions were partially released while I was working with Solang. And to be honest, I, I got code fit because I have, I have the feeling that uh, something might not work as expected. So I also gained skills reviewing, reviewing code. So some users interacted with, with my features uh, in the Solang compiler and they opened GitHub issues uh, regarding, regarding what I was developing. So I had the responsibility to interact with the users and review their, um, their pull requests as well. And Lastly, uh, I became a better Rust developer. So uh, learning Rust during the mentorship was kind of a challenge because I came from a C++ background, which has a completely different way of managing memory. So uh, I had to take some time aside to learn Rust and understand how it manages memory uh, to develop my, my algorithms in the Solan compiler. So uh, what I enjoyed the most about the mentorship was the knowledge I gained with compilers. I did dive 
deep dove into how compilers work, especially when I was implementing the common sub expression elimination. Uh, it was a very complex optimization to implement. Uh, I gained better uh, knowledge about how to analyze design alternatives. So compilers are, are optimizations algorithms are naturally very complex and we should be uh, careful to know what to prioritize if either we want to prioritize a better code generation or more speed or less memory usage. Uh, we need to have a clear discussion on that. So Shen, my mentor, uh, Shen provided me with the open-mindedness to view other approaches and to think about uh, possible outcomes for my design alternatives that were not originally planned. Uh, so some valuable outcomes from this mentorship is that uh, I had a clear introduction to the open source community. So working with Solang was my very first contribution to open source. And um, I also made new connections during the mentorship. Most of my connections came from uh, the blockchain community, but also some of them were previous uh, maintenance from the Hyperledger organization. And I am very grateful for making, making these new connections because they helped me define which career path I'm interested in and uh, what I wanted to follow. Uh, the last valuable outcome was the career advice. So Shen Yang, my mentor, provided me great career advices and opportunities. And we are still discussing something about compilers as, as, as I've uh, liked working with Solang and compilers in general. So after finishing the mentorship, I was left with some aspirations regarding the open source community. So the first one is that uh, doing this mentorship uh, incentivized me to keep contributing to open source projects. I want to keep working with Solang and I also want to get involved in other uh, open source compilers or um, repositories that use compiler theories for some kind of optimization like uh, the LLVM project, the TensorFlow and the Triton compiler. And as, as I've just graduated right now, so I want to start my career as an engineer. And what is good about doing this mentorship uh, in your senior year is that you get provided with many opportunities to work with something you like. So the mentorship has opened me um, clear ways uh, to start my career as a compiler engineer if I want to. And I'm very grateful for the mentorship and my mentor to have provided me with those opportunities. So this is it. So thank you for your uh, attention. Let's see. Great. Hi, everyone. I'm very excited to be here today. I'm Desmond and I am a, I'm a final year student at Brown University and I really love systems work. So if anyone ever wants to talk about distributed systems, database systems, or offering systems, I'm always very happy to talk about them. And today I wanted to talk about uh, the mentorship program I participated in. So last summer I was under the Linux kernel mentorship program and under this program we worked in the Linux kernel with the goal of one, addressing some of the many bugs found uh, by dynamic program analysis running in the cloud. Uh, I think Phil talked with, had a great presentation just now, giving an overview of the program. And the goal really was that uh, in taking a look at these bugs, we were one, in a deeper understanding of the kernel, and two, hopefully fix many bugs, which is always great for everyone. And today, I specifically wanted to talk about uh, my experience making a third open source contribution uh, to a project. And what do I mean by this? Uh, specifically, I'm going to first take everyone through a short overview of open source journey from my perspective. And this differs from everyone, uh, from people to per person to person, but a very simplified view would be that we have somebody who comes and joins the community, 
they start participating in discussions, they start contributing, and then they start, and generally we see that their contributions grow in terms of responsibility, in terms of technical debt, in terms of engagement in the community. But this, this picture is a bit simplified. And what I found, because I've been a big fan of open source philosophy for a long time, I tried to join many different projects. What I found is that there's usually this gap that a lot of people don't talk about. Um, usually we have a lot of great resources talking about how to get started contributing to open source. There's a lot of great blog posts, great resources on say making your first pull request or getting started talking to the community or making uh, or how to grow as, a, as an open source contributor. But oftentimes, and I've tried this for a couple of projects, I'd be able to make my first contribution. Usually I make a documentation fix or maybe I implement some small feature. And then sometimes I'll be able to make a second contribution where I take a longer existing issue and try to fix it and try to participate in the community. And maybe after a few weeks, a few months, uh, that contribution lands. But usually I feel like I get stuck somewhere, right? So I've made an initial contribution. I've sort of grown a bit as a contributor, but I'm not really sure how to keep growing as a contributor. And so today I wanted to talk about how the Linux kernel mentorship helped me make this leap past this roadblock. And that brings us to what I mean by this presentation uh, title, which is making a third contribution to the Linux kernel. So not being literal, but as in the idea of making a contribution beyond your first initial contribution. Now, this is a story that um, is possible, not just by my own efforts, but really only possible thanks to some of my mentors that really showed me how this process is done. Shaw and Greg were the official mentors for the Linux kernel mentorship program. They're both Linux maintainers. They're both uh, fellows at the Linux Foundation. And they compiled this amazing list of resources just showing how to get started, just from getting the code base, how to make your first patch, how to test the patch, how to work with the community, and also how to grow as a developer. How do you get stack traces, how to understand them? How do you get traces in the kernel itself to, to learn more about the kernel? And also the great fortune uh, to meet Daniel along the way. Daniel is the, he's a maintainer for the Linux subsystem in graphics. And he, was, he wasn't an official mentor for the program, but he's a really great informal mentor where he really showed me the ropes on how to be a Linux kernel developer. He would uh, review, fortunately, unfortunately, he had to review a bunch of my patches. Uh, he pointed a lot of advice, uh, resources to look up, and was just overall a great encouragement on the process. And so I really want to take this time to say thank you to my mentors. This was really a transformative journey and really couldn't have experienced it without all your help. And just to give a Brief overview, it's very hard to squeeze a whole summer of like lessons from my mentors, uh, but a brief overview of what they did uh, that really helped, that really helped me understand the process of going past that sort of roadblock uh, that I faced in joining a larger open source community. Uh, they, I, I tried to steer it down to four points, and specifically in two different dimensions. The first is the technical dimension, where my mentors provided a lot of learning resources that I talked about on how to contribute technically, what to read up on uh, to, to solve specific bugs. And it also gave a lot of very valuable feedback. So on the notes I took, on the patches I submitted, sometimes I would submit a patch that I didn't realize would break the kernel. And then they would point out that, okay, this is where it went wrong. Here are some uh, continuous integration systems running the cloud. How can you test them? And how can you improve on your patches? What other options are there available in terms of say, Kernel, kernel structures that I wasn't aware of that can help improve the patch. And this really helped break through the technical barrier in terms of making the contribution. But it's not all just about technical stuff when contributing to open source, because a lot of the times there's certain emotional barriers as well that get in the way of working on highly technical and creative work. And so my mentors really did a very good job. They really encouraged me all the way uh, and this is it's really great because I think I can speak for a lot of people when we work on a project that are larger than ourselves, sometimes there's a lot of doubt, like are we actually helping? Or are we creating more problems for people? And just hearing from the maintainers that our work is valuable and helping, it just really gets rid of the emotional barriers in terms of being able to contribute effectively. And lastly, they also gave a lot of very useful career advice. Uh, 
and this is great not just in terms of understanding more about the industry, understanding what we have to learn, and also uh, it's very helpful for finding a job. But the really powerful thing about this is when someone comes up to you and gives you career advice, it kind of makes you feel like you're part of the community, like you are a Linux kernel developer and you have a future in the open source community. And this is very powerful. It really helped along the way and it was just very validating. And just taking the lessons from my mentor and try to extrapolate. So how can we take these lessons and how can we make contributions, contributions outside a structured mentorship program? Uh, some of the things I learned from my mentors that really helped and I think applies to everything, not just to open source projects, but to life, the universe, and everything um, that anyone wants to do out there, is really a bunch of different, different steps uh, that, have, that have to take place. The first is to get really interested in the project, because again, it's not just a technical work that we're doing. It's very creative work and you need a lot of energy to push through, perhaps sometimes when you get stuck or when you're not sure how to proceed. To getting interested is very important. Do this by talking to friends, talking to people in the community or reading blog posts out there. Second is to follow the conversation. Something that really helped me and I've, I've applied this to all sorts of aspects in my life now was that during my mentorship program, I followed every single email that came out of the Syscaller Google group discussion. And what they showed me and what doing this showed me was that uh, I could see how other people tackle problems and discuss bugs in the Linux kernel. And I could still see that I was part of a larger community, that I wasn't the only one struggling to solve bugs. Number three is to just do something. Sometimes we get stuck, not sure how to make a large or impactful contribution. Uh, the first patch I submitted to the kernel was just removing a non-existent link in some documentation page. And even though it was a, a small contribution, it was really thrilling to submit a patch and just release it out to the world. And that got me really excited to continue working on the kernel. And it was just great all around, showing me the process and helping in the emotional aspect of things as well. Fourth is to find mentors. Uh, if you can, you have the opportunity to find a structured mentorship program, it's always great. But every, there's always a bunch of informal mentors out there. Everyone in the community is great and everyone wants to help. I'm always so surprised at how generous everyone is um, in terms of offering advice, in terms of offering feedback to patches and contributions I make. And the last, the last step in the formula is to stay in the game. You know, Sometimes you get stuck, but you just have to keep, keep going for it. And even if you're experienced, if you're stuck, if you're a beginner, I think it's always helpful to stay in the game and if need be, go back to step one, you know, get interested, start seeing what other people are doing again, try something, get feedback, and to keep following this loop. And I feel like this is uh, quite a winning formula for making, a pro making progress in any project and becoming part of a larger community. And I like to think it worked out well. Um, at the, by the end of the summer program, I made a couple of contributions to the Linux kernel. I participate, participated in a bunch of discussions and contributed to a bunch of different subsystems. And I really feel like I finally made this leap and became part of the larger kernel community. Looking forward, um, I want to follow my own advice and that's to stay in the game. I realized that one really needs to make time for open source. I found that in the past few months due to other things in life, I've not been keeping up too well with open source contributions, but I really want to make this a bigger part of my life. And along this way, I want to one, deepen my uh, knowledge of the Linux kernel to understand how everything fits together. And two, I want to help people start their own open source journeys because I think this is really a transformative experience. I want more people to be able to experience this. I've been encouraging a bunch of friends to get into the game and last but not least, I want to make more friends in the community. So this is me saying hi to everyone watching this presentation. I can always be contacted at this email or by Twitter. And thank you so much to my mentors, to the community, and to everyone for listening to this presentation. Hello, everyone. Um, <clears throat> my name is Wei Yao, uh, and today uh, I will going to talk about my uh, mentorship experience with the uh, Linux Foundation. Uh, the project that I uh, I worked on is uh, DRMan and uh, uh, GitHub Verifiable Credential Registry. So the web link shows the details and uh, the code base of our project. Uh, okay, so about me, and again, uh, my name is Wei, and uh, 
Uh, currently, I'm a PhD candidate at New Jersey Institute of Technology in U United States. Uh, I'm currently uh, working as a research assistant in, in the blockchain lab at uh, NGIT. And uh, my research areas are uh, blockchain technologies and uh, deep, deep learning. A uh, quick review of uh, the, the project that I, I am working on uh, with uh, Linux Foundation. So our, pro our project uh, is to, uh, um, let, me, let me share a story about this project because uh, uh, you can think about such a scenario that uh, uh, if you are like, if, uh, when, you, when you want to buy a beer from a bar, and you have to share. You have to share with uh, the uh, the staff uh, your driver license that uh, you are over twenty one years old, right? So, but at this at this, that time, when you present your uh, driver license to the to the to the bar, uh, you get some of your um, sensitive information. For example, your address or something else will be uh, will be linked. For so at that time you want to to prove you are twenty one years old, but it also keep the cred uh, credential for the confidential of your credential. So, uh, uh, our system is to help you to uh to make such a system to be able to make this security and uh, uh and digitized. So, uh, we we are we are creating a we're creating uh, tools to build an uh, uh, issues and a holder and a verifier for the whole system. Uh, so by using the technology of uh, the blockchain and uh, um, and use uh, GitHub and GitLab to build the repository. So my goal of this project uh, is to, first of all, is to understand uh, the blueprint of the whole framework and then, um, is to we are going to develop the uh, open source product to to uh, uh, share with the uh, community and also uh, I would like to contribute this you know to the uh, community. Uh, so about the the entire framework. So um, you can see on the left side of this uh, this this figures there are three there are some. Uh, uh, entities in this framework, it's like a general, uh, general uh, framework of the, uh, of the, uh, as that side. So here, uh, what we have done is to recreate uh, the issue and by and uh, uh, by using the GitHub and also we uh, we created uh, we integrated with uh, uh, the dig distributed ledger. By using uh, hyper ledger indie and the hyper ledger areas to to um, enlarge the whole project. Uh, about the program programming skills, what we uh, there are so many uh, there are so many pro <coughs> progress uh, so many skills are involved in our project. For instance. Um, there's many uh, open source projects are uh, integrated into the project. And also um, we need uh, like a bunch of uh, programming skills to, to int integrate the different uh, platform. But the most important here, uh, what we have learned is uh, uh, shell script and Python and JavaScript. Uh, how about the uh, Experience that I uh, work with the uh, uh, community <coughs> that we have learned. Uh, uh, so first of all, we are using the the uh, GitHub as uh, our code base repository. So I have so we have to we have uh, uh, submit about like uh, uh, like I mean at least like uh, ten uh, pull requests from from the original repository. And also we use a uh, uh, GitHub as a version control, and uh, uh, and uh, so and, and also if we have any questions, we can 
uh, posts on the to the uh, Hyperledger community and the Linux Foundation community. Uh, the, there's there's a lot of uh, um, experts and they are they are willing to help us. Uh, about my mentoring experience, I would like to uh, thank to my mentor mentors, uh, Mr. Vina the Panasek and uh, Mr. Ara uh, Prakash. Uh, their their professional skills have won many of the medals and are truly a great inspiration for me. Uh, so uh, Mr. Mr. Vina, uh, he's an uh, expert in uh, cybersecurity in India. And Mr. Aaron, uh, he was uh, the previous mentee in this program. And then uh, this year, uh, he continues to contribute on this project and uh, uh, help me. So uh, it was a very, uh, it was a, a fantastic, Fantastic experience that I work with him. Uh, we are um, Mr. Vina, he's located in, in India, and Mr. Aaron, he was uh, he, he was in uh, Sweden, and I, I'm in the United States. So uh, even even the, the distance is uh, super far, but we still can you know we feel that we are super close. And even because if I have any question, I can. Just uh, post a question to on the um, WhatsApp or or using uh, uh, email, and they will respond to me like very, uh, you know. I think that's I, I did the first time they can respond to me. Um, I very appreciate them to to uh, leading me to uh, get involved to the uh, open source community. And uh, what I have learned from this project, so. Uh, the most of all important things that is uh, the first of all is like so uh, you always doing your research first and uh, and, and then um, never afraid to ask any questions in this community and also you you can not you cannot or just uh, uh, read in the reference or but you have to get your hands dirty to you know to do the programming but uh, the last but not least is to um, just have fun to join the big family. Uh, about uh, uh, the future of, uh, uh, of my plan. So, so first of all, um, based on our progress, we, we feel that this project can be uh, extended to, to, um, to work with uh, some other open source project and uh, and next one, we would like to promote this project to, to as a research project to, um, uh, to the Hyperledger community lab. Uh, and also, um, I would like to contribute to the, uh, to the community, like like my uh, my mentor uh, Aaron he did, and also. Um, um, I would like to be an expert in this uh, uh, blockchain area. Uh, okay, uh, thank you for everyone. Thank you for the audience. Thank you for Linux Foundation and thank you for my mentors. Thank you. So uh, thank you uh, Wei for sharing. And uh, hi, my name is uh, Han. And uh, today I'm going to talk about my Linux Foundation mentorship journey in integrating blockchain technologies. And uh, so a quick short introduction of myself. So I was a Linux Foundation Mentorship Program mentee during last summer. And uh, currently I'm enrolled uh, at UIUC. So I'm a, currently I'm a graduate student at the University of Illinois. And uh, I'm super interested in software engineering and currently I'm improving my capabilities in software, software engineering. Uh, uh, with my uh, graduate degree. And uh, so this is a picture of myself uh, celebrating the New Year Eve with my friends. And uh, a quick overview of my mentorship project. So uh, basically uh, what the, the mentorship project, the project, the huge project that I enrolled in was called Hyperledger. So it is a collaborative open source uh, effort uh, backed up by 
uh, Linux Foundation and uh, big firms like IBM, Fujitsu, and so on. And but even within Hyperledger, there are uh, lots of um, blockchain technologies. The one that I uh, interacted with are called Iroha and Cactus. So Iroha is a straightforward distributed ledger technology that's great for uh, asset management. And on the other hand, Cactus is a framework and there's a blockchain integration tool designed to integrate different technologies. And that's great for asset transfer. So that makes them a great fit because imagine that you pair asset transfer and asset management together. And uh, so my uh, mentorship project was about uh, developing a connector plugin for the Irohan Cactus integration. And the picture at the right bottom just shows a block diagram for my integration. So basically uh, the one that's sitting uh, in, in the middle was uh, just uh, my connector plugin. And uh, my connector plugin takes a request from the cactus and uh, it sends a request to the Iroha ledger. And also uh, it receives the feedback, the response from Iroha and then send it back to the cactus. And finally, uh, cactus deals with the communication uh, with the users. And uh, for my project, my goals are to understand the architecture of Iroha and Cactus. And uh, also, as I mentioned earlier, develop a connector plugin for the Iroha and Cactus integration. And uh, on top of that, I also developed a documented example of integration between Iroha and Cactus. Last but not least, so this has to be do with a uh, pull request because this is open source and uh, open source community. And uh, I want my, all my work to be uh, uh, inside and pull request and uh, have my pull request get approved uh, and uh, reviewed by the maintainers of the community. So talking about what I learned. So first of all, I really learned about the internal infrastructure of Iroha and Cactus. And I really had to have a really deep understanding of the infrastructure of the two ledgers because I had to integrate them, understand their uh, characteristics so that I can have the do the real integration. So first of all, uh, even for the Cactus framework, and that was a really huge project, and I had to understand all the like the project, the Cactus framework structure and organization and divide, develop my own toolings uh, within the Cactus framework. And uh, as you can see from the, my first example, this is just like a one uh, snippet of my code that's sitting inside the big Cactus framework project. And uh, also along the, uh, developing and I had to understand the coding standards and meeting all the requirements along the way. And uh, also on top of the software developing, we also, we have to, the developers, we want to conduct the unit test and the integration test to validate that their works succeeded. And in my example, in my uh, internship, so I utilized uh, the tape for framework because my project was uh, using the TypeScript and uh, tape was a wonderful tool to uh, unit testing and integration testing the uh, TypeScript uh, calls. And uh, as you can see from my uh, second picture here, so it shows that uh, there are like six uh, test suites and uh, uh, around like a uh, one night ish uh, test cases and they all passed and completed. And there's also code coverage as you can still see from the screenshot. And uh, also uh, during this process, I really learned about uh, new technologies and some old technologies that uh, I already had interactions with. So for example, the, my, uh, this whole project was using TypeScript and Node.js and Node.js was just a uh, JavaScript being used to develop backend uh, software. And they are really new to me. And uh, prior to this uh, mentorship program, I had almost zero experience in uh, TypeScript and Node.js. But this experience really transitioned me to be a capable developer uh, in developing uh, TypeScript and Node.js uh, softwares. 
And uh, on the other hand, I probably I had some experience with Docker and RESTful API, but in this case, uh, I had this uh, like an industrial hand-on experience with Docker and RESTful API, and uh, I was able to uh, learn some really advanced Docker techniques, and uh, I used uh, those Docker techniques to slim the Iroha Docker image size by 85%. And uh, uh, also for the RESTful API, because uh, the Node.js, uh, the JavaScript, Javas, um, JavaScript was dealing with the RESTful API, and I had to deal with RESTful API every day by day. And uh, I really have a more in-depth understanding of, of RESTful API after this mentorship program. And uh, also, last but not least, I had a really deep understanding of the open source software development cycle because I was uh, involved into it for three months. And uh, specifically, I contributed two pull requests. And uh, for these two pull requests, uh, all of them have been reviewed and approved by my mentors and by the Cactus maintainers because my code go to the Cactus repository. And uh, uh, finally, all my contributions have been uh, passed all the tests and uh, passed uh, uh, the criteria uh, from the maintainers and uh, they have been finally being merged into the Cactus framework. And uh, talking about my mentors, so I have my two awesome mentors because uh, uh, I was involved with uh, both the Cactus framework and the Aroha Ledger. So uh, my first mentor is Peter, and he's uh, an active maintainer of uh, the character framework. And the, on, the, on the other hand, Greg is my second mentor, and he's a core contributor to uh, the Iroha community. And the way that we work together was that, so basically, uh, for I believe that for that's for all the uh, Linux Foundation mentorship programs. So all the mentees is going to have a weekly checking meetings with their mentors for around one hour. And during that meeting and during that summer, I uh, every week I do presentations to my mentors to show my uh, progress and receive feedback from them. I also look for their advice for like uh, the, uh, the short-term girls, like for example, like what should I develop for the coming week? And uh, on the other hand, so besides the checking meetings, so I use uh, Telegram, Rocky Chats, emails, and uh, to communicate with my two mentors. And sometimes I also attend the dropping sessions uh, with Peter so that I can get some hand-on experience and hand some hand-on tutoring from Peter. And uh, also, uh, as I mentioned earlier, my two mentors review my calls and my pull requests, and they also provide the overall guidance throughout the three months. And here I want to present a huge thank to my two mentors. And uh, now um, I'm going to talk about the three surprises I had during this uh, overall mentorship program. So first of all, uh, as I uh, talked about briefly just now, so the technical guidance from my mentors were really helpful. And uh, specifically, so uh, as I illustrated uh, Priorly. So I almost have zero experience with TypeScript and Node.js. And initially, I was also kind of overwhelmed by the um, technical jargons used by the blockchain community. And uh, so it was uh, early June, and I was really kind of uh, frustrated by uh, all the, like, the technical terms and the, some of the technologies. But uh, uh, my mentors really helped me. So um, as I talked about just now, so I frequently uh, use like uh, communication tools, and I also visit my uh, a mentor, one of my mentor Peter's uh, pair programming sessions, so that I was able to improve day by day and uh, learning uh, all the like the, the architecture of the Cactus and Iroha framework, and uh, on the other hand, was able to. Uh, learn TypeScript from uh, my mentor, Peter. And this uh, technical guidance from my mentors really helped shape me to be 
a really capable developer throughout the way. And I was able to approach the project and finish the project really efficiently. Uh, and uh, I was able to almost finish the project uh, like before August. And uh, at the, uh, in the end it was like around three weeks. And uh, that was like August. And I was like doing some wrap ups and code reviews and documentations with uh, all my mentors and maintainers. And uh, uh, as I talked about just now, so I also received help from the uh, maintainers. That's, that, that is to say, so I received some Azure guidance from the open source community. And uh, also on top of that, so I also attend the IROHA community meetings frequently. And uh, uh, I really want to thank uh, Sarah and she's uh, the, I believe she's the coordinator for the uh, IROHA open source community. And sometimes I have uh, some really in-depth uh, questions about the IROHA ledger. And uh, my uh, mentor, uh, Greg, he's uh, really not uh, in that area. And uh, so what Sarah does is that she, uh, I ask her questions, I just send her my question and uh, she's going to find uh, the IROHA developers that's working at that field or that area to come and help me or get like uh, their answers to me. And uh, when I, whenever I have frustration or have struggles with understanding the architecture of uh, IROHA and uh, the, this really, this Azure guidance from the IROHA community really helped me to uh, keep my pace and uh, keep my efficiency throughout the software development. And here I still want to uh, show great thanks to my mentors and the open source community. And uh, also last but not least, this mentorship experience really has a lasting and positive impact throughout, uh, even throughout the, for this uh, last half a year. And uh, I believe that they are going to have a really lasting and positive impact uh, in the future. So for example, uh, so in, it has a really positive impact to my coursework and uh, uh, I'm going to take, uh, I plan to take a blockchain uh, course the next semester. And I believe that this blockchain mentorship experience really helped me to have a more in-depth understanding and will help me with that course. And uh, I also plan to take a uh, distributed systems. And I also take the community communication systems, communication networks calls. And all of them have some interactions with uh, decentralized protocols or decentralized systems. And uh, my experience and my understanding uh, taken away from this mentorship program has really will help me and uh, has already helped me to understand the distributed ledgers better and help me to um, have a deeper understanding throughout my uh, journey. And uh, also I believe that this mentorship experience gave me uh, more opportunities. For example, uh, when I was doing my job searching because I'm looking for internships and some of the employers really look for candidates with uh, skills or experience in uh, developing softwares under the, on the Linux platform. And my experience at Linux Foundation really uh, helped me stand out among all the other candidates. And also uh, this experience really have helped me to have more exposure to other opportunities. opportunities. For example, I'm able to uh, speak as a like, speaker here and this is going to help me with my um, other skills like uh, public speaking. And here I want to really present a huge thank to the Linux Foundation to uh, host this event and help uh, everyone uh, have a re really well-rounded experience and a great experience uh, throughout uh, their mentorship program and uh, even after their mentorship program. And after my um, mentorship program and I had these uh, aspirations. So first of all, I uh, this mentorship program helped me to transition to be a software engineer. So uh, the reason is that, so 
uh, for my undergraduate, I my major was electrical and computer engineering and mathematics. And uh, prior to that, prior to this mentorship program, I had uh, not that much uh, experience with uh, software developing. But this mentorship program gave me really an immersed exposure to developing softwares and uh, really helped me to uh, validate that my true interest is in developing softwares and I would like to be a software engineer in the future. And uh, second, the second inspiration is that I want to get more in involved into the, like, the open source projects. So I, so throughout this past journey, I made some contribution to the open source community. And I'm really proud of that because my uh, contribution is uh, downloaded by people every day. And uh, my contribution is uh, being shared, uh, being impactful and influential and helpful for people over the globe. And I want to um, continue that uh, momentum and uh, I want to become more involved in the open source projects so that in the future, uh, I have more works, more calls being shared over the internet and uh, being able to be uh, help more people over the, the, the world. And uh, last but not least, I want to, uh, I have this uh, aspiration that I want to speak at uh, uh, more open source conferences because uh, I want to share my experience and so that uh, more people will be more interested in the open source projects and in developing um, and contributing to the world uh, through like the open source projects and open source softwares. And that's going to really help the world a better place. And uh, that's pretty much it. And uh, thank you for everyone for listening to my presentation. Hello everyone. Um, my my presenting a topic is from almost giving up on computer science to being open source contributor. Um, so let me talk about myself. Uh, I am Oswin Timalcina. I am a full stack developer intern at Louisiana Small Business Development Center. Um, I am a LFX mentee of spring 2021 at Cloud Native Build Packs. So uh, let me present uh, telling my story. I always um, had an interest in problem solving, uh, specifically in programming. Um, I joined for bachelor's in com computer science um, and was doing my best, but I was not getting my, I was not getting any opportunity. So frustrated and exhausted, I almost gave up and thought that I cannot do good in computer science. Um, one day I heard about open source project and the collaboration culture from one of my classmates uh, and instantly got interested in it and started researching well the topic. Um, then I got interested, then, then I got introduced to the LFX mentorship program. Um, I applied to it, got accepted. And when I was in my senior year, the journey began. In the mentorship program, I worked uh, with Build Packs, which is the CNCF incubating project. Um, in a layman term, Build Packs helped to transform your source code into runnable app images uh, that can run on any cloud. Uh, during the mentorship program, I set a few goals with myself. Uh, first, learn about open source culture, CNCF, uh, cloud native Build Packs. Second, learn about Git and GitHub. Third, get most out of the learning opportunity. First thing I worked on was to learn about the build packs, um, what it does, how it works, setting it up and getting an overview of the technologies that are used in the project. Um, in the meantime, I adopted habit of going through documentation and depth learning. Um, then I worked on a feature extension um, which was about developing a build packs registry namespace notifier. Um, it is an automation to notify Slack channels for every in the repository with GitHub action. Here, I got to learn about Git, GitHub actions, um, and automation. Next, uh, I worked on an issue 
to design and implement BuildPack's registry search. Uh, I had previous experience with build, uh, React, but had never worked on React with TypeScript. So from this, I got exposure to React TypeScript uh, and how it can be integrated with Ruby on Rails application. Hence, I also got to learn about Ruby on Rails and its model view controller architectural pattern. Finally, I worked on investigating APIs and corrected outdated API documentations. By the inter end of the internships, uh, all my goals that I mentioned in the previous slides were checked. I got into, introduced to open source culture, CNCF, CNCF build packs. Technically, I learned in detail about image containerization, container orchestration, Git, and GitHub. I also got to learn about automation and GitHub Actions. Similarly, I also got to work on Ruby on Rails, React, type, React TypeScript. During the process, uh, there are plenty of other things that I learned from my mentor and the community. Um, it was a great experience uh, in the mentorship program with my mentor, Joe Kotner. Uh, he is the software architect at Salesforce and a founding member of BuildPacks. Um, he guided me throughout the mentorship program and made sure to provide a smooth and great learning experience and environment. Every time he was curious about what are the things that I wanted to learn and work on and was open to any doubt and confusions. Um, moreover, I got to work and connect with many other contributors, also got to meet the community in community meetings. Um, I felt welcomed in discussions and post, uh, post on Slack and GitHub. Um, any doubt and confusion were warmly addressed by contributors and project maintainers. I'm still connected with my mentor and he has been helping me with career guidance. Now let me talk about my dream for the future. I'm planning to contribute more to the build packs and open source project in general. Um, I want to make people around me aware about Linux Foundation, LFX Mentorship Program, CNCF, and CNCF Build Packs, and let them know about the perks of getting involved. The Mentorship Program has, again, revived me of dreaming big, not giving up, and the student mindset to always keep on learning. Um, I want to be a lifelong learner. Um, so to the future mentees, I want to share some suggestions. First, uh, communicate regularly with your mentor and the community. Try scheduling uh, weekly calls if possible. Um, second, challenge yourself with learning new tools and technologies. Um, if you are stuck, mentor is always there to help you. Third, have fun and enjoy the process. Share yours and listen to others' life experiences. Uh, at last, I want to thank to the Linux Foundation, the LFX Mentorship Program, CNCF Build Packs and my mentor, Joe Kuttner, for helping me and giving me an opportunity. It's such a nice and amazing learning uh, experience. That ends my presentation. Uh, so right now I'm looking for a full-time position as I have graduated from college. If you have any career opportunities available, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, these are the ways to connect with me. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, graduates. Those are awesome presentations. Um, and you have shared your experiences with all of us. And it's, I am uh, happy, glad to be able to be part of the, your journey, helping you all at the Linux Foundation and then also um, Linux, on our platform, Linux Foundation platform. It's, uh, and thank you to our sponsors. Without that, them, we won't be able to do what we do. Red Hat, GitHub, Intel, IBM, they have been supporting our mentorship efforts since the beginning. Thank you all. Bye.